and go to Exodus chapter 20. We are at commandment number 5 now. And uh, this the first commandments that we've looked at, they've been mostly um, about our relationship between us and God. And this one, we get started and basically human relationships and how we're supposed to treat other people. And it starts out talking about the parents and it, uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. It says, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So right here, a very simple command, a very direct command. It's a command that's given, and with it, it's a promise. God said, if you'll keep this commandment, your days will be long in the land. You think, you know, how does honoring your parent going to give you a longer life? And we'll cover that in a little bit. But notice, though, this verse, I mean, it doesn't give exceptions. And one thing, when people see this command... Now, we live in a world today in a generation where people don't honor their parents. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And um, there's a lot of excuses people have for why they don't have to, honor, or have to follow this command. But I believe this command applies across the board. I don't care how sorry your parents are. I think you ought to honor your father and mother. The Bible did not put any exceptions in here. And so I want us to look at some things. Though. There's a reason why this command is difficult in America today. The, you know, the family unit is a mess in America. It's an absolute mess. People have no idea how families are supposed to be, uh, the way God structured it. And this command, it should be an easy thing to do. You know, I can't imagine cursing my parents. I can't imagine striking my parents, you know, doing anything horrible to them. Uh, but at the same time, it's not uncommon in this world today. And a lot of people, they, they struggle with honoring the parents. And it's because, you know, there's a bunch of other things that they're not following. There's, uh, you know, so many commands that guys gave they're not following. But this command it is, it's very direct. It's very simple. No exceptions are given. But people do, they struggle with this because there are bad parents out there, okay? Well, we gotta admit there are some bad parents out there. I mean, it, it's gotta be tough for some kids. And there are certain questions I do think they need to be answered. But I believe they can, you know, they, we can answer these questions without adding things to the Bible or taking things away. Because that's what people do when they see this commandment. They want to, you know, make an exception. Well, you know, if you're, a, you know, what if your parents are terrorists? You know, they'll come up with all these crazy things. And you, you obviously don't have to honor your parents then. But, you know, let's look, first, let's look at God's plan. We need to review God's plan for a family before we can, we can go on. Because, you see, once again, I will admit... In the American culture, this commandment is difficult, but it shouldn't be difficult, okay? When, you're, when you start breaking all of God's laws and when you start going completely against what the Bible says, there's going to be certain things that should be easy that are not going to be easy. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, every parent knows this verse. They've probably quoted it to your kids many times. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. Ephesians, it's reminding us of that commandment back in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, where it was we were told to honor our parents that our days may be long upon the land. I mean, who doesn't want to live longer, okay? I mean, we all know we're going to die one of these days. I want to go to heaven one of these days, but I don't want to go today, all right? Unless it's, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to do that, all right? I want to live as long as I can. I've got things I want to accomplish here in this earth. I've got family I want to take care of. And I, I, want, I want to live longer. But we see here that it, God's plan, all right? And I hope nobody gets offended by anything I say today. These things are, this is what the Bible says, and it's against the American culture. But let me tell you something. It is God's plan for children to obey their parents. Okay, now how's, how's that offensive? You know, well, I'm telling you, it's amazing how many kids order their parents around these days. It's amazing how many parents, they, you know what church they choose? They, they, they let their kids choose the church. And where are kids going to want to go to church? They're going to want to go to the church with the most fun stuff. They're going to want to go to that church I was telling you about that has a water slide baptismal. You know, they, they're going to want a lot of the bad things. And it's amazing how many parents are letting their kids run the home. Their kids, they don't behave at home. Parents, they can't make rules. They can't set bedtimes. I mean, there's no discipline in the home. They're letting the kids run the show. And the Bible says their children are supposed to obey your parents. 
But I, you know, and parents are like, I read that verse to my kid and the kids aren't obeying me. Yes, and you know what? God has commanded you as parents that if you love your kids, I'm sorry, you need to spank them. All right, you got, you got to spank your kids. I know that's politically incorrect. I know people today, they call it child abuse, but I don't care what the world calls it. The world calls, they'll call two men living together marriage. All right, that doesn't make it true. And they can call you spanking your kid abuse, but that's not abuse. You know what abuse is? It's just let, leaving your kid to themselves, let them do whatever, let them turn into just a, a criminal and just not have, you know, letting them just sit and watch TV all day and play video games all day and just be completely out of control. Say, so, you know, spank your kids is, you know, that's abusive. Well, I think drugging your kids up is abusive. I think letting them just do whatever they want is abusive. Cause let me tell you something, that kid, he's going to grow up one of these days. And if he's never had any discipline, if you never spanked him one of these days, there's probably going to be a cop shooting at him. And I don't know about you, but I would rather my kid, kids behind get a little red than for them to get a bullet in the chest. And that's what's happening to these kids. Many of them are in jail today. Kids, I mean, young teenagers. I used to have, go be involved in the detention home ministry. Kids, 12 and 13 years old in jail. I mean, these skinny little kids, it's like, what could they do? And the truth is, they can do quite a bit when there's no parents restraining them. And the real problem with these kids is that, you, you know, they're out of control, but you can't send them home. Parents won't deal with them. You know, back in the day, my dad tells all the time, if he was in the public school, and if he did something wrong in the public school, they'd spank him in the public school. And then his parents would find out he got spanked at school, and then he would get spanked at home. Nowadays, they spank a kid in a school, parents are going to sue that school. And we wonder why kids act like animals. We wonder why we've got all these riots and things going on in our country. And I'm telling you, kids are supposed to obey their parents and they're not just going to come by it naturally. You are going to have to administer the board of education to the seat of knowledge. It's going to, it's going to have to be done. And the Bible says, he that spareth his rod hateth his son. And I've talked about before. Oh, you know, I, I don't hate my kids. But listen, hating is not just a feeling. When you do things that are terrible to someone, when you do things that are harmful, you are hating that person and you just letting your kid do whatever. That's the most hateful thing you can do. You can say you love them all you want. You can give them all the hugs that you want. If you're not spanking your child when they're out of control, you're hating your child. And we wonder, you know, why... Our relationship so bad between parents and kids. You know why? Because you loved your kids so much growing up that you wouldn't discipline them that now they're an adult and they're reaping the consequences of a childhood that was out of control. You know, they didn't learn anything in school and now they hate their parents. And parents, they can't get their kids to honor them when they're growing up because their kids hate them because the parents never disciplined them. And they do. It's amazing how, you know, when, listen, when your kid's little, the Bible says, you know, spare not for their crying, okay? They're not going to die. When you're spanking your kid, they act like they're going to die. Okay, Th They do. But you know what? I've seen the parents who didn't spank their kids. And it's funny because when these kids grow up and their life stinks, guess who they blame? They blame mom and dad. So what do you want? Do you want them hating you now while they're little or when they're growing up? You know, it. You know, it, it's gonna, it depends on what you do and they're supposed to obey you and you got to teach them that and you have to make them, you have to make them do that. But you know, children, you, you need, you need to obey your parents. You need to honor your parents and you, you cannot honor your parents without obeying your parents. Okay. I mean, do you want your kid to live a long life? Well, then they need to obey you. They need to honor you. If they disobey you, they're not going to live a longer life. Okay. Why? You know, they're going to be going out and doing the drugs and doing the drinking and driving and all, you know, all these things that kids are doing that are greatly shortening their lives. It's amazing how many people die from just stupidity. And, you know, maybe if they would have learned to obey their parents when their parents said, you know, don't do these stupid things, you know, don't go sticking your fingers in light sockets and things like that. You know, maybe they wouldn't do these things and wouldn't die early deaths, but Children, you know, they've got to be taught at a young age the importance of respecting authority. The Bible says when it talks about chasing your child to, to do it B times it means do it early. Start out, start out early training. And you, listen, you can send a strong message without even leaving a mark with kids. I mean, the behind it can take 
It's very sensitive and it can, it, it doesn't take much to send a signal to the brain that I should not do what I just did. I, I think God made it for that very reason and parents aren't taking advantage of it and they wonder why their kids turn out like animals when they're adults. But you got to teach them that. Uh, children, they should remain under the authority of their parents until they become an authority figure themselves. And when does that take place? Well, look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. Now, listen, a lot of people might not like this, but a lot of people don't like a lot of what the Bible has to say. And welcome to America, all right? Welcome to the problems that we're having in America. So I don't care that this isn't popular, okay? It, it works, and therefore, I'm gonna, it's Bible. I'm going to preach it. Genesis 2.22 says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, knowing good and evil. Or no, uh, not chapter 3, I'm sorry. Chapter 2, verse 22 says, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Okay? And then if you look uh, in the New Testament, Jesus referring to that story, he used the term, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave in his wife and they should be one flesh. When a child leaves their father and mother, it's supposed to be at marriage. Well, now the world says at 18, they can leave the house and be their own, they're an adult and their own authority figure. Yes, the world does say that, but our world is stupid, all right? Our world doesn't know how to turn out good kids and uh, how to turn out good adults. The Bible says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. What cause? Marriage is what it's talking about. Well, why do they have to get married to become an authority figure? Let me tell you, marriage matures you pretty fast. You know, marriage, uh, you know, here's, you see these young single people out there just doing some of the ridiculously stupid things they're doing. You know, you got these college campuses where people go and, you know, these young 20 some year olds, I mean, practically drink themselves to death. They do one foolish thing after another. And it's like, you know, where are the parents? Okay. And the thing is they're in their twenties. Okay. Our world says, they don't need authority figures, but look at 20 some year olds these days. Are these people adults? Okay. I mean, what, I mean, even where I, where I work, you get these uh, guys in their twenties that are single. They can't hold down a job. They don't show up for work. They're not responsible. They're absolutely worthless. And one of the things that I, I have watched guys transition from boys to men in their thirties. And it's usually when Unfortunately today, not so much when they get married, but when a kid comes along. And that's another thing too. You're not supposed to be having kids before you get married. You're not supposed to be having a physical relationship before you get married. All right. You're just asking for trouble. But here's the thing. Marriage, it, it matures you. When all of a sudden you've got a wife that you're supposed to take care of and you have kids that are your responsibility, it will help you get your act together. And the way we're raising kids these days, these people that are in their 20s, I don't care if they're 21, they're not adults. These people are still kids that have never been disciplined. You see all these people protesting on these college campuses. These, these people are not adults. They are spoiled little kids and they can't keep a job. They can't do anything. Why, why is that? Why can't millennials keep a job for more than six months? You know why? Because most of them aren't married. Most of them don't have kids. Most of them, they weren't ready to leave father and mother. They should still have mommy and daddy telling them what to do. Mommy and daddy should still be telling them to brush their teeth. Mommy and daddy should still be telling them who their friends are. They, they should. You see who these people are running with. You see how these, mommy and daddy should be telling them how to dress. You see how these people dress and the things that they do. You say, well, they're in their 20s. They shouldn't need that. No, they shouldn't need that, but they do need that. And there is a huge difference between your average 20 some year old single person today than a married, I'm, I know I'm stereotyping, but listen, I'm just showing that the Bible, it says what it says and it means what it means. And it says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, cleave and his wife. You get a young single guy, even if he's 21 years old, and if he goes off by himself, he's got no accountability, he's got no, no authority, he's got nobody that he's taken care of. He's going to feel completely free to go out and just 
do whatever, spend all his money on drugs and alcohol and all the things that people are doing these days. And then he's going to end up hitting rock bottom, being miserable. And you know what he's going to end up doing? They always end up doing, they always end up cursing mom and dad. They don't honor their father and mother. And we need to realize that children should remain under the authority of their parents until they become an authority figure themselves. Completely unpopular. That will get laughed at in most places. But you know what? I'll laugh at their sorry life <laughs> for not following by me. You're going to laugh at me for that. I'm going to laugh back when your life stinks because you didn't do what the Bible said to do. That's what the, that's what the Bible says. And we do. We've got 20 some year old kids running around now legally able to drink, legally able to smoke pot in some states. They're doing drugs. They're, and these people are allowed to drive cars, own weapons. And I'm telling you, they shouldn't be allowed to. These people are nothing but overgrown kids is all they are. And the problem is they weren't taught to obey their parents. They weren't disciplined. And then we're wondering why families are a mess. You know, society is a mess. It's because we're not doing things the way the Bible said to. Um, you know, the, but that you become that authority figure, I believe, when you get married. The man becomes an authority when he takes a wife. The wife goes directly from the authority of her father to the authority of her husband. Also not popular today. I don't care. That's what, the, that's what the Bible teaches. After marriage, obedience to parents is no longer required. However, honoring is still required. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 22. It says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Okay, now when it says hearken, does that mean obey? Or does this mean listen? You, know, you ought to listen to what they had to say. You ought to listen to their advice. Okay, Obviously, it's your choice. It's your decision. Okay, When you become an adult, when you get married, when you start having kids, the decisions that you need to make, they are your decisions. But it is wise to seek counsel and good people to listen to are the people who probably care about, more about you than anybody else, your father and mother. Obviously, they can't make you. There's going to be disagreements. And when you disagree... You're the authority in that situation, but you should always listen to what they have to say. You should always hearken, pay, pay attention, don't take it lightly. You should always speak and act in a respectful way around your parents forever. It, for, for the rest of their life, even after they die, you shouldn't go around cursing your parents. You ought to always honor your parents, no matter what they do. You're not going to speak against them. You're not going to uh, do evil towards them or harm them. You ought to love them no matter what. You know, when you're on their turf, you ought to follow their rules. I've seen this before too. You know, where par parents, they raise their kids a certain way. They teach them certain things. You know, don't say these words. Don't dress this way. They've got all these rules for them. And then they go and they get married. And then it's like they throw the fact that they don't have to follow those rules in their parents' faces. And I think that's terrible. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying you ought to be phony around your parents, but you know what? If they raised you different than the way you are now, don't go throwing that in their face when you're on their turf. You know, if you were taught not to say certain words, okay, growing up, you know, there's certain words in some households that are bad words and other words that are not. Okay, when you're in your parents' house, don't use those words. Okay, honor their rules. Respect the things that they taught you. If they taught you not to dress a certain way, you know, don't go thrown in their face that you don't have to listen to them anymore. How disrespectful. You know, honor them when you're, when you're on their turf. Uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, pay attention to those things. Parents, they need to, parents, you need to remember to raise your children to become adults. A lot of parents are missing out on this one. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay. The goal in parenting, I'm trying to prepare my kids to become adults. I'm trying to prepare my boys to become an authority figure, to become a husband, to become a father. I'm trying to prepare my daughters to become a wife and a mother. I want them to become adults. Real, I'm not raising them to become 21-year-olds. Okay, That's just a wait-out-the-clock situation. That's what most people are doing. Most people are like 18. You know, I, just can't, I can't wait until they turn 18, and then it's not my problem anymore. That's not raising your kids. Okay? You need to raise them to become adults. That is not a wait out the clock situation. You raising them to become an adult means that you're preparing them to be responsible. 
You're, par- you're preparing them to be hard workers. You know, you're preparing them morally. Okay? You're going to teach them some morals. You're going to teach your sons and your daughters about physical purity. I don't want my kids getting all these STDs and nasty, disgusting things that are out there. Well, guess what? They're not going to be able to live like an animal. They're not going to be able to live like the rest of this world lives. You're going to have to teach these things. You're going to have to train them because guess what? This is America. One of these days, your children are going to turn 18. And the law is not going to be on your side. And if your daughter wants to go shack up with some bum, you can't stop it once they turn 18. She can pack her bags and she could walk out and she could go shack up with some worthless bum that can get her pregnant and is not going to take care of the kids. That They can do that. This is America, folks. Listen, this is America. Your wife tomorrow can say, I'm done. I'm out of here. She can divorce you. You'll probably have to pay her alimony. And now, and if you have kids, you're going to be paying her child support and it's tough enough to pay the bills of one household, but then dad, you're going to be paying the bills in two households and there's nothing you can do about it. Our law will side with them. Our laws in this country side with immorality all the time. They're trying to tear families apart and there's nothing you can do about it. And I understand that my Tommy, he's only 15 in three years in this country in three years, my son could say, all right, dad, I'm out of here. He could walk out of my house. He could go buy him a pair of skinny jeans. He could go pierce his ear. He could go marry a guy. And a year later, be telling me he's got AIDS. And our country will celebrate him. And me as a loving father, I, I have to live with that. that. That's the country that we live in. And you, so you think that I'm just going to listen to what this world has to say? And just do what the world says to do that's turning out people like that? No, I'm going to do what the Bible says. I'm going to train them to become adults. And there's a lot of parents that are just, they're not preparing them for that. They're overly protective of their kids. And it's all about follow my rules, follow my rules, do what I say, do what I say. And they're not actually training them. They're not actually preparing them for anything. It's just sheltering, sheltering, sheltering. But listen, this is America, people. When they turn 18, they can do whatever they want. You better actually train them to become an adult. You better just get it in your head right now. The little junior that you love so much that you think is just the sweetest thing in the world, he's going to grow up and be free to do whatever abomination he wants to do. And so you better actually train them and prepare them and just plan on them leaving your house, being an adult, and parents aren't doing that. And it's it's causing a lot of problems. And you know, after your kids are married, you're no longer in authority. And once again, in America, after you're 18, you're not even in authority. And in many ways, you're not even in authority right now. All right. They try to tell you what to do, but, uh, you know, good luck. You know, just it's amazing what people do on the Internet these days. You know, don't go spanking your kids on Facebook Live and things like that. You know, it's, it's amazing the stupid things people do uh, that, you know, don't 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 do that. But look, as a parent, you're you're raising them to become an adult. And when they become an adult, your job is to give counsel when they ask for it, not orders. Yeah, you, you can't do that. So you can try all you want. You can scream as loud as you want. You can threaten them all you want. The law is not on your side. And you can do it till you're blue in the face. But listen, your opportunity to train and give orders, it, it ceases when they get married. And in, America, in, in the Bible, it ceases when they get married. In America, it ceases when they turn 18. So you better, better get ready. You better prepare them. You better, you better teach them the truth. You better set a good example. You don't, you know, and after your kids grow up, you don't have to approve of everything your kids do when they grow up, but you should, as a parent, always love them and let them know you're there whenever they need you. Okay, that, that's your job. And it's amazing how many families get destroyed because parents, they don't know boundaries. They can't keep their nose out of their kids' business. They, you know, they, over, they, they interfere too much. And sometimes you just got to learn, say, if your kids are growing up and out of the house, you know, if you failed, say, Lord, help me do better from here on out. But don't go, you know, don't go try to spank your 21 year old. All right. Just because, you know, 
you forgot to do it when he was, you know, when he was five. <laughs> you, you can't do that. It's not going to work. You know, don't allow and just don't allow your pride to take away the pleasure of loving and enjoying your kids and grandkids. A lot of times what happens is, you know, parents are disappointed in what their kids do and pride sets in. Oh, this isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I expected. And it's like they got to prove to everybody that they're against their kids. And so they, it's like they have a terrible relationship just so they can impress other people. You know what? Who cares what other people think? You know what? Go enjoy your kids. Enjoy your grandkids. If they're not doing everything the way you think they ought to do it, you know what? That's not your problem. You, as a grandparent, you're supposed to now enjoy your kids and enjoy your grandkids and just get over your pride and just enjoy them, love them. That, that's, your, that's your job. And so Matthew chapter 15, turn over there. Matthew chapter 15. See, chill, one thing that children are supposed to do, children are also, they're supposed to do what they can to help their parents when they're old. Look what it says in Matthew chapter 15. Now, don't, don't take this the wrong way, but let, let me show you some things here. And uh, Matthew 15 verse 1, it says, Then came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which are of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the, transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God hath commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, mother he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. What Jesus was talking about here, you know, you have these Pharisees, they're trying to make Jesus follow these traditions that were never commanded in the Bible. And Jesus got onto them and said, wait a minute, your traditions are causing people to disobey the commandments. They had this stupid tradition that they came up with that you could pledge, if, if you pledge something for the work of the Lord, then nobody was allowed to touch it. So for example, if you, your parents, maybe they had a need and you had the ability to help that parent out, but maybe you didn't want to give them the money or you didn't want, in these cases back then, maybe it was animals or property. You could just say, well, you know what? I've pledged to give that to the work of the Lord and now your parents can't touch it. And... You're supposed to honor your parents. You're supposed to take care of the parents. And many commentaries I've read on this, I, I can't necessarily prove this from the scriptures, but a lot of people believe that you see in the Bible where the uh, firstborn son got received a double portion of an inheritance. And many people believe this because it was his responsibility to take care of the parents when they got older. And, and what a lot of people believe was going on back then is that inheritance that they got from their parents so they can help take care of their parents, they're pledging it to the work of the Lord so they now don't have to take care of their parents. What was given to them so they could take care of their parents, they now have taken and used for something else and it was they were breaking the commandment of God to take care of their parents. But listen, you ought to help your parents out when they get old. And, you know, and so this, you know, this is just a brief example of how things are supposed to be, but you know, what about honoring your parents in this world? Okay. I've, I've kind of showed you a perfect world. Okay. And also with the taking care of parents, it's taught in the Bible that, you know, parents are supposed to lay up for the children, not the other way around. Okay. If you want your kids to take care of you, you better save up some money, save up some things to help them take care of you one of these days. You can't just expect them when they're young, when they're raising their own kids, to have the money to take care of mom and dad too. All right, most I, I can barely afford to take care of my family, you know, let alone mom and dad. But however, if my parents were to get where they can't take care of themselves and they were to sell what they have and give it to me, so I could start taking care of them, it would be absolutely wicked for me to go and use that money on myself when I should be using it to take care of them. That's what God wants. That's what God expects. But he said, you know, the, the, all these things are in a perfect world, but this is not the world we live in in America today. We live in a world where kids are dating and having physical relationships as teenagers, where they're having kids before they get married, where they're shacking up before they get married, where, I mean, the family structure is a mess in this country. 
Parents aren't training their kids. I mean, they're, they're, there's all these commandments that they're not doing right. And so you have bad parents out there and you have bad kids out there. And then you start talking about honoring your parents like, I shouldn't have to do that because my parents are this and this and this. But listen, the command is there. Honor thy father and thy mother. No exceptions given. And here's what, when people start making excuses for why they don't have to honor their parents, basically what they're doing is saying, since my parents broke this commandment, I can break another commandment. Is that how we make things better? When somebody breaks a law of God, do we fix it by breaking another law of God? Listen, sadly, there's going to be many times where you might be the only one obeying the commandments, but... You still got to do it. You all, there are no exceptions. Those who are not leading their families in a biblical way will always have unpredictable outcomes. The Bible says in Proverbs eleven twenty nine, he that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. What does that mean? Okay. Well, when you throw something up into the wind, it's very unpredictable. What's going to happen, isn't it? And the thing is, if you aren't raising your kids, right, if you're not training them, you know what? They might turn out okay, but there's a really good chance they're not going to turn out okay too. You know, you you don't know. You're going to inherit the wind. You're not going to have a predictable outcome. You know, when children are not raised right, dishonoring their parents still is not acceptable, but it's going to be difficult for them to honor their parents. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, after the children obey your parents, honor thy father and mother, verse 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Okay, don't provoke them to wrath. If you're not doing the right thing, if you're not training them right, if you're not parenting them right, you're going to provoke them to anger, which is going to make them want to do things they shouldn't do, like dishonoring their parents. I want my kids to live long. I want my kids to honor me, so I shouldn't be provoking them to wrath. That's going to make it difficult for them to keep that commandment. No matter what I do, they should obey that commandment. Okay? But isn't it easier for all of us to obey commandments when other people are obeying commandments too? And nobody's helping anybody by breaking honor thy father and thy mother because another commandment's being broken. You never make things better. You never, it never gets better when you reward evil for evil. Okay? When somebody sins, another sin is not going to make that one sin go away. It's just going to add another sin, which is probably going to add another sin. And so we see, though, that obedience to that fifth commandment is one that promises long life. And this, this can mean a few things. One, that God will bless you with longer life, that God's going to give you a longer life. Or you could make the argument that it's just common sense. It's just the laws of nature that if you honor your parents, you'll live longer. What do you mean by that? Well, Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. When you pay attention to your parents, when you listen to your parents, obey them, when you honor them, it's going to bring blessings in your life. It's going to bring good in your life and it's going to help you avoid the evil. Proverbs 6.20 My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. And all these are talking about from parents, not from the word of God, from your parents to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of the strange woman, the the commands from your parents, they protect you. There's a lot of things out there that can kill you and your parents, their rules warn you about those things. And so you could say it's God's blessing. You'll live longer by honoring your parents, but I don't think it has to be a supernatural thing. I think it's a completely natural thing. Your parents tell you, don't don't drink, don't do drugs. Well, is that not going to prolong your life if you follow those commands from your parents? I mean, science agrees with with a lot of this. Proverbs 10.1 says, A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Okay, When you show wisdom, your parents are happy. When you're foolish, they're sad. Why? Because your parents aren't happy when bad things happen to you. They want good things to happen to you. 
They want you to live a long time. All parents want their children to outlive them. Okay? I think that's one goal of every parent. Okay? I'm going to try to stay in this earth as long as I can, but I hope, I hope I don't outlive any of my kids. Many parents, they've had to go to funerals of their children, and that, that's, I can't imagine how difficult that is. It's a very sad thing. It's not, all, you know, it's not always because of foolishness. Sometimes things just happen. You know, and, and there are so many things that can just happen and that could kill somebody. You know, there's diseases, there's cancer, there's all these things. The last thing I want to do is go doing things that are going to invite that and, and, you know, bring it my way, you know, and die from foolishness. But the Bible says in Proverbs 20, 20, whoso curseth his father or mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Proverbs thirty seventeen: the eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out and the young eagles shall eat it. That sounds pretty extreme right there too. But you know what the Bible's just saying? That person who treats their parents that way, they're going to have a destructive end. They're going to die early. You're going to have a violent death. And we see that all the time. So this is the first commandment that deals with our relationship with mankind. And I think everyone would have to admit, we've all broken this commandment too, haven't we? I think so far, if you, when, you, when we study these, we're at commandment number five. Every one of us have broken these commandments. All five so far. You are, we are guilty of every one of them. And as our society continues to fall apart, you know, we, we need to be careful not to give in to the temptation to violate this command. If your parents are alive, you should honor them. Okay? If you're growing up, you don't have to do everything they say. You don't have to agree with everything they do. But you know what? You, you ought to honor them. You ought to be respectful to them. And if you are, uh, if you're a parent, you ought to do everything you can to make it easy for your children to honor you. Okay? I, I said it. No excuses. No matter how bad of a parent you are, your kids should still honor you. But there's no guarantee they're going to do that. So as a parent, why don't you try to make that as easy as possible and do the right thing? Live godly. You make sure you don't go stepping out of bounds and getting, you know, putting your opinion where, you know, it's not wanted. You know, you, you just do your part and pray that they'll do their part. And if, if, you're a, if your parents are bad parents, once again, and you're, you do your part and let God deal with them. And no matter what, I do not believe there are any exceptions. Honor thy father and thy mother. And first command with promise. So with that, let's all stand together.